Hey everybody, this is Jo and I'm here in my Houston, Texas garden and I'm in zone 9A and I wanted to tell you a little bit about butterflies today. So this garden is a butterfly garden that we planted um, in about 2021. It had, we have mature things around the edges and, uh, but in the middle, all of this, we took the grass out of the lawn, took the lawn out and uh, planted this butterfly garden in 2021. And so I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about butterflies today. Oh, there's Ms. Doubtfire, had to be in there. Hello, Mrs. So, we grow pipe vine uh, for pipe vine swallowtail butterflies. Um, and they're so, so beautiful. And this is their, um, uh, their caterpillar forms. We've only seen the black ones. We haven't ever seen the red ones. And we had a bunch of them uh, about two weeks ago. And I, you know, I could, would go out and look at them. And um, then one day they were all gone except one. And so I brought him in, we named him Kevin, and I brought him in to keep him safe. We brought him into the kitchen and I put him in this little enclosure with his pipe. I get him fresh pipe vine every day. And um, a couple of days ago, he turned into a chrysalis. Look at that, it's the, he's the green one. And it just looks like a, a you know folded leaf. It's amazing camouflage. So that's a pipe vine swallowtail chrysalis. The brown chrysalis on the right is a black swallowtail uh, chrysalis that actually we've had for probably eight months now. Um, they can overwinter. We think he's still viable. Um, they are known to overwinter for several months. And so um, we left him in this enclosure all winter long outside. Um, he hasn't come out yet. Maybe he never will, but we're hoping. So the other, uh, that one is a black swallowtail. So here are the male and female forms. They're just beautiful. And then their um, caterpillars look very much like a monarch caterpillar. Um, we haven't had any that were quite this white looking, um, but they're very stripy. And they grow on dill and fennel and parsley and rue and carrots. So we have dill planted among other things for them. And so I keep going out every day and finding, I'm bringing them in because we have so many lizards and so many wasps that will eat them. And so uh, we did this last year. I can't seem to get him quite in focus. So this is the very earliest one where they have just that white uh, stripe in the middle. And we've got several um, in here. And so I just keep them zipped up uh, to keep them away from the predators. It was, we really didn't intend to start raising butterflies like that. I um, mean, we've never done it with the monarch, but we just got so bummed when we would watch them become beautiful caterpillars and then one day they'd all be gone. And so that's really what got us um, bringing them inside. And it's kind of a pain, but it's also so much fun. And we started doing it during the pandemic, which certainly we all needed something to do inside during the pandemic. And so here's the parsley here. Um, I've let it bolt um, and, and flower and um, it will poop out when it gets hot. And so our main um, host plant for the black swallowtails is fennel. Now you can grow dill. I, I have terrible luck with dill, all my dill dies. So I do fennel and it's lasted. I sort of have succession planted um, dill uh, and hopefully it would keep us going through the summer. I can't quite remember if it made it all year or not, but I certainly planted it again in the fall. Um, and then I'm, I would be interested to know, you know, they will, they will also host on carrots. And that back there is a carrot. I'll walk back to it in a second. But this is in the carrot family. This is Amy and it is in the carrot family. And I would just be curious to know if it would also host on Amy. You can see, let me stand back a little bit. You can kind of see the basic form of this um, Amy, and then if I show you the carrot, it's such a similar form, um, and so and the and the flowers are very similar as well. So let me climb back here. Oh, before I do, let me come over here and 
show you. So I planted this Cecile Bruner rose and it got quite tall and then I hadn't had, I drive a Mini Cooper. And so I could not get this gigantic trellis in my car. I couldn't get it home. So I finally got my husband and the trellis in the same place and he picked it up. We, we bought it today. And um, so I've started uh, tacking up, I'm starting training my Cecile Bruner Rose and I've kind of got it in a little fan. I think I've got four um, canes going and I want them to go up and then over and haven't really, after this height, I haven't really, I haven't thought that far. The other thing, I, and I'll show you how I did it, but the other thing I'm hoping is that this will become a solid bit of green so that it will sort of camouflage all my big old um, plastic pots back there. Um, and I may, if it's, if it's camouflaged enough, I may feel free to put more things that would are normally in the garage I can put back here and let it be sort of a, a useful area that this will cover up how ugly it is, all the all sort of junky plastic pot things. So I, when I tie up roses, I use uh, hemp uh, twine. Um, they use hemp for rope on ships because it doesn't rot. And so I use it because it won't rot when it's out here, you know, all year long in the weather, it won't rot through. And I tie them pretty loosely. Um, I'm just sort of giving it a suggestion because they're such new sort of tender canes. Um, but uh, as they uh, mature, I can tie t things tighter and be more specific about where I want them. But for now, I just tied them one, two, three, four, like a, like a fan. It, that would work really well if I wanted them to go this way, but I've got to get them up and over. And so I'm not really sure what I'm doing on this one, um, but it's a very vigorous grower. And so I'm hoping we can get it up high and blooming quickly. I still got lots of seedlings. I redid so many of my seedlings were so pitiful. And so I re-sowed like a million um, zinnias and a million cosmos and uh, you know we talk about using new seed so I bought this seed the package was for 2023 this whole flat is one thing this is zinnia northern lights and I put a single seed in each cell and out of 60 cells I got one two three five five seeds came up so this is not a me problem this is a seed packet problem that I did not have very good viable uh, new fresh seeds. Um, and so, you know, sometimes you feel like such a failure when you plant things and they don't come up, but sometimes it's not a you problem. This is a, this is a Zinnia, this is the Zinnia company, seed company problem. Um, and I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't planted all of them identical in the same one. And I can see here, different variety. Uh, this is Mazurkia almost all came up. So, um, you know, don't be discouraged. <laughs> and, uh, and it's sort of the same thing here. This is one kind of cosmos. A lot of, most of them came up. This kind of cosmos, two came up. Okay, um, you never know quite what's gonna happen when you go, when you trust putting a seed in some, uh, in some dirt. I've been giving away the uh, swamp milkweed like crazy to anybody who will take some. Um, my friend Rachel um, over at uh, Gulf Coast Butterfly Gardening, she has a fabulous YouTube channel. She sent me seeds and honest to goodness, I had so many, like 50 seedlings came up. And so I've already given away like two, two uh, flats of nine uh, to one to a neighbor I just met and one to an old friend. And so uh, that's been really fun. Look, I'm just gonna stop. Look how pretty the um, the fennel flowers are. They just so floaty. I just love them. I do like that flat topped shape. All right, so I'm decided I'm gonna go through the middle today. Let me climb back past my self seated ammy and my self seated parsley. And then, oh my goodness, look at the poppies. I'm about to die, I'm so excited. And then this is all, this huge swath right here is all uh, black and blue salvia. And I'll show you a close up of that in a second. 
And then I've got my little pale sunflowers all along the side. And my uh, pretty parasols coneflower is, is really starting to fill in and, and it's so pretty. I'm really, uh, that's my favorite thing. Other Cleomes are finally catching up with their, with their big brother here, this gigantic thing. And then, oh, look at that carrot. Isn't it pretty? It's just so puffy and, oh, I love it. And then here is the, um, the Agastache Tutti Frutti, which last year got to be um, about six feet tall. And it is so beautiful. And I'm hoping this will also get six feet tall. That is a, this was a big part of the yard all spring. It was magnificent. And so um, I've got a couple more. This is an, one I already had. And then I just got a couple more in the, in the uh, mail a couple weeks ago. And so I'm, I, I hope it gets big this year. And then this is the other thing. This is, I had a, a Budlia die. So I replaced it with this one and it just has not done much at all. It's not getting very big. It's kind of, you know, filled in, but um, I'm wondering if, you know, it's a dwarf variety, but I wonder if there's more than one dwarf variety. And so my last dwarf one got to be five feet tall. I mean, goodness, I need to go look up the, you know, I, I, I read the tag when I bought it, but was it mismarked? I don't know why it is not getting any bigger, but it just has like screeched to a halt. It hasn't gotten any bigger. Okay, here before I go through the big depths, oh, look at this. This is Caldwell Pink. So after I cut all of my roses and rosebuds off about 10 days ago because of the thrip infestation, these were tiny, tight little green buds and they hadn't gotten thrips in them yet. And so they look like they're blooming. They're going to bloom pretty well. Um, and I don't see a lot of thrip damage. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that, that at least I can get these uh, to grow beautifully before the thrips rear their ugly heads again. Now here's the plant that we were all uh, guessing over. I was calling it a weed for a really long time. And it finally, finally, after getting almost four feet tall, has bloomed. It's a bachelor button. I, you know, I threw, I told y'all I threw a lot of seeds out here. Apparently, bachelor buttons can get this big. I never had any last year. I guess maybe I didn't give them enough room. I had them too tight together. And this was just a single plant and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's so silvery. The leaves are really pretty and silvery. And, um, and you can see it's got little buds all over it. So I, I'm so excited. <laughs> I love it. I wish now I had, um, you know, I wish more had come up. I've got zinnias com coming in. And then the salvia big blue has finally sort of made a, um, made an appearance. We had two and a half inches of rain this week. And so that really gained some, some, you know, sort of robust, uh, growth. Um, and now it's making my, my new little, uh, mystic spires look a little bit, a little bit dinky, but, um, it's okay. They'll, you know, it'll all be pretty. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. All right. Oh, and here's my volunteer came out of nowhere, uh, Verbena bonariensis one. So I'm excited. I love it. It's in the middle of a lily, but, uh, I'm happy to have it. I'm not going to complain. All right. This is a salvia. It's a pink salvia. I've forgotten the name of it. Let me think. Nope. It's gone. It starts with an A. I'll look that up. I can put it in the description and I've pinched it back. You can see I've pinched the whole thing back so that I can have more. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, blooming. Try to get this little bee. Hey, buddy. Checking it out. Here's another carrot back here. Now this, I love. This is a different um, Cleome, and it's so peachy. And it makes me think about the coral nymph salvia back here, right in front of that blue chair right there. Um, and they're the same color, sort of peachy pink. And oh, it's so pretty. 
So, so pretty. I've got tons of frog fruit that I'm just kind of stepping on. It's a Texas native um, ground cover, has little white flowers. Um, it doesn't quite get enough sun back here to bloom very much. And then I have my little cages because that's just, you know, my normal speak for don't step on this. <laughs> and so I've got some zinnias in here and I just, uh, direct, so I had extra seeds. And so I just put some zinnias and things just directly. I just put some seeds in, so I scratched them in, um, just so they wouldn't go to waste. Um, this is a bunch of self-seeded cosmos from last year mixed in to the the little frog fruit and then there's another ammy right there coming in and then that's a crazy big old tall dill uh, not dill a uh, fennel plant behind it and this maiden grass it's getting bigger every minute and I've got some more carrots there and then this is one of the things I'm just loving 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 are all those wine cups along the path and spilling over the path i just it's so beautiful to look at from my from my back porch and, oh this is tons and tons and tons of uh salvia leucantha one flower but i don't really expect this to bloom until the um the fall anyway i get a little bit sometimes i'll get a spring bloom and, but one of the things I've been doing is coming back here with scissors and, and just nipping it back because I want this to stay smaller and not fall over everything. I got frustrated with it being uh, too fluffy last year and tippy. Here's my giant poppy. So excited about that. And this, I don't know, this carrot I think has gone by the wayside also. Um, but see, it's just rotted. Or gotten eaten. Look at that. Oh, slug. There's a slug on there. Oh, stinkers. So I've lost all my carrots from right here. This is um, a monarda that I grew from seed last year. It never bloomed. And it's like it's kind of taken on some steam this year. And so that's awesome. And then here's the Amistad salvia, which is just huge, huge, huge. That spike right there must be almost six feet, five and a half feet tall. It's taller than me. And then the big old pentas are looking great. And I'm just noticing there's one that's a different color. I don't know what happened there. This, it's just getting some buds on it. This is that blue salvia eulogenosa that is just, just take all the shade. Um, I planted it 15 years ago and walked away and it has just stayed and stayed and stayed. I'll cut it back and it kind of wanders around a little bit and I'm trying some in this little, it does tend to flop, so I'm trying some in my little leftover from last year's experiment um, plant support, which was a disaster and so <laughs> I'm not using them this year. And then the uh, penstemon looks fantastic. Sometimes it, some of it's kind of fallen over after uh, two and a half inches of rain and it was a big old storm and so uh, they're kind of they're kind of knocked knocked down a bit and this little diamond this euphorbia diamond frost diamond snow I'm not sure I know I've bought different ones over the years um, but it sure is looking pretty and oh I was gonna show you so this is what I'm loving look at this that is euphorbia diamond frost or snow and I just tucked it in the side of this, but it's being held up by this little metal, you know, sort of bird cagey looking decorative thing. But I wonder if I could plant things like that, plant that in the middle of a pot with one of those and trim it so it looks like a, a uh, topiary, almost like a, a boxwood ball, but covered with white flowers. I just, <laughs> it's just an accidental thing. It looks really cool. Um, so I might do something like that on purpose um, in the future. Here's my little dahlias that came up and I was very brave and clipped, pinched the middle out. And so now I've got these two and then I got a couple more come up. I really thought I was just getting that one. Um, and then I have random Cosmos seeds coming up and then I've stuck in a little 
clipping of a, uh, an IV geranium just to see, because I think it might be nice to have IV geranium hanging over it and then have the dahlias come up in the middle of this, this big support. So I think that could be really pretty. Now, oh, let me show you the pipe vine that Kevin, the pipe vine swallowtail, uh, he was born on this little plant the butterfly, his butterfly mama left eggs, and you can even look on some of my shorts, you can see um, the little eggs, and um, and you can see where his, they all, the little teeny tiny babies munched that leaf, and then I rescued him alone from this one. And then there's some more of it there. It's growing really well for me in a pot in the ground. It's not working for me very well. I think I'm just, don't have quite the right conditions. Here's another kind of pipe vine, and it's, you can see just all this mud. It rained so hard, and so it's kind of beaten up. But then I've got the, the vining kind, and I clipped a big, big leaf off of this, and good old Kevin ate some of the big leaf and the little leaves, so that was interesting to see whether he would do that. Here's my oak leaf hydrangea. If anybody knows, I, I didn't trim it because it had such pretty uh, fall foliage and so I didn't cut it down. I'm new to this. And so I've got some smaller pieces here, but I would like to, after it blooms, to, to go ahead and trim this, trim these super tall pieces off and try to get a better form. And if anybody out there thinks or knows that that's a bad idea don't do it wait until next spring or something please put in the comments you know wait wait leave it alone because <laughs> I don't want to cut it and then it doesn't grow back or something and then oh look at the little four clocks they've just sprinkled themselves I planted these once that was it they have just self-sowed um, since then and then here are all my little uh, self-seeding um, uh, columbines. Some of them are getting kind of big back here. So I'm hoping that they'll, they'll, we'll come up with some flowers, but well, who knows? Again, this is something I'm kind of new at here. I'm going to give you a little look just of what it looks like from this direction. Oh, I've got a big plant recommendation. So this year I bought stock, which it was on sale. I bought it um, sort of next to the pansies and the snapdragons in the fall, maybe Houston, maybe October or November. I had never grown it and it's been an amazing plant. Um, it, this is it. I bought a couple different varieties. That is it there. This is sort of a single variety here, the white. And then this little stuff here is also stock. And sometimes the individual flower will stay on the, on the plant for like two or three months. And when they poop out, I've just been cutting them, cutting them, cutting them down at the bottom. And they've come back and come back. I, I, I'm just amazed. And I, I'm gonna, I will always grow this. I think I will always, when I pick up my pansies, I will pick up some stock also. Um, I, I'm so impressed with it and I assume because it was kind of with the pansies that maybe it can't take the heat but I happened to see some at the garden center last week also and it's April so maybe it'll last all summer we'll find out but I recommend it I think I will always grow that there's a pretty picture hello pumpkin such a pretty baby these ivy geraniums are so pretty still. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just so happy with them. And this hot pink one is so pretty. And they really have sort of a different, even though they're ivy geraniums, I've sort of, you know, I'm new. I'm noticing this year, I sort of hadn't grown these before last year, that some of them have, you know, bigger leaves and bigger flowers and they're much more upright. And then this one over here, the flower is almost like a more traditional geranium, sort of pelagonium, 
pelargonium type flower um, to the point that I wondered if I had actually not gotten an ivy geranium. Um, and then this one is, the leaves are much shinier and the little, the little clusters of buds are so much smaller and the flowers are sort of more, they're sort of single flowers and much more delicate and more upright. You can see they stand up a lot more. Some of them hang down, but they stand up a lot. And so they're just sort of a different varieties. And then I'm not sure if I showed you last time, but I bought a new one because I could not resist it. And it's just beautiful. Let's see if I can get it to be in focus for you. Ooh, look at that. It's like a little face. And my coral nymph, I hear you. Hello, kitten. The coral nymph salvia is just so pretty. And then that incredible begonia back there. And then this begonia is so beautiful. And that mossy pot, I just am crazy about. And I'm liking this sort of serene look of these ferns and then these um, irises that'll just, you know, kind of be a beautiful, nice shape in the garden. Um, because they won't bloom again until next year. And they didn't bloom really well this year. But I'm liking this and the little Walter's Viburnum behind it. I just, I really like this. And then this is more frog fruit up in the front here. I just think it's really restful. And here are those pretty little wine cups. I love spilling out. And these wonderful scabiosa, little pincushion flower. And I learned that there are different varieties. So this one I bought at the garden center and it's just about a foot tall. But you, when I bought seeds, they all became like three feet tall and I didn't quite know what to do with them because um, I didn't put them where they would stand up. So, um, but I, I really like the smaller ones. The tall ones seem to really flop, um, really flop over. And then this little knotweed is still just, just blooming and so cute, but it does self seed. It's all over the place. So you kind of have to really want it my Liatris that I bought um, little bulbs for. I've never grown it and so I'm just I'm just waiting with bated breath to see what happens. It kind of seems like these are going to be bloom stalks but um, but I don't know I'm so excited. My little Delphiniums they're not really very happy here but they're all right. I, I do really love them. And this Peter's Purple Monarda is, I'm not sure quite when it's, what time of year, what time of the spring it's gonna bloom, but um, it's ready. It's got a, it's a big clump of it. And then I had some more Amy that self-seeded right along the, the walkway, which isn't convenient, but <laughs> it sure is pretty. Here she is, big stretch, a big stretch. That's my girl. And these beautiful fox gloves. So lovely. And old blush is coming back even after I cut everything off of it because of the thrips. All just came right back. It doesn't seem to have a big problem with thrip damage even if it's got thrips. It sort of shakes it off a little bit. And uh, Cousin It is getting bigger every every day bigger and bigger and then this is gentle Hermione which I'm just holding my breath this is the first time it's gotten a good shape only because I've trimmed it very hard whenever there was a flower I cut it really up with a big long stem and I'm real happy that it's sort of looking like a bush and then this is a Crocosmia and it's bright orange. It's beautiful, but you know, y'all know I don't want orange in my garden, but I let it go because it's so pretty. And more of these uh, Cleomes, and then that's uh, more of the Peter's Purple Monarda that I transplanted. And then, ooh, 
this. Oh, okay, so that is a porter weed that is native Texas purple flowers. Let's see if we can get a little little picture of that purple flower right there. And, um, and it will be five feet tall. It's gonna be fantastic. And then this is another native Texas plant. This is that um, dwarf Barbados cherry. And it finally bloomed. And it's, you know, it's kind of scruffy. But this plant I have only had for a couple of months. Um, but it'll have uh, food for birds. And, um, and, ho and it can get big or you can keep it trimmed. And uh, so it, I'm new. I don't know what that's going to be. All right, let me climb back out of here. Try not to step on too many little seedlings. I'm loving my little self-seeded Johnny jump ups in the in the gravel. I just think they're that's just precious. I love that so much. And I still got some Texas blue bonnets going, which I just uh, they're so much fun. I love them. And then this scraggly business I'm leaving, it's sort of, it's hidden by the blue bonnet. But this mess with these ugly little fuzzy flowers, that is called cudweed. Here's the, let's see, where's the plant of it? It's kind of this gray sort of fuzzy, but that is a, um, that is a host plant for the, I think, I want to say it's the American lady, um, butterfly and they're spectacular butterflies and so I'm just leaving it um, and if you're not careful it'll take over your life apparently um, this is the first year I even knew what it was now that is a um, agastache um, it's a blue and I can't remember the name of that one um, but it should get just a couple of feet tall and have pretty blue flowers and it was the favorite of the bees last year and then of course my yellow which turned out to be brighter yellow than I want. Um, Lanceleaf Coreopsis looks fantastic. If it was terrible, I would not feel bad pulling it out, but it looks so pretty. I'm obligated by, I don't know, flower, can flowers give you peer pressure uh, to not pull them up because they look good. Here is some um, aquatic milkweed. That's a native Texas milkweed. Um, I haven't seen any monarchs uh, activity on it at all. And then I've got some little babies that have self-seeded and I've got a little uh, cage over them just to keep the butterflies off of them um, it, so they don't put any, any uh, lay any eggs on there just to let them get a little better and bigger and more established um, before they get chewed on. One of my favorite things going on back here is this fleece flower. And I just love it. It's such a pretty little flower. Um, but the plant is so pretty. And the more sun it gets, the more sort of bronzy um, speckles the leaves get. It's so happy back here. It gets a lot of shade back here. And I, I really am impressed with this plant. I just love it. And that's the false indigo. I'm, I'm uh, hoping it blooms this year. Last year it was kind of pitiful, but it, this is the second year with it, so it's got a little time to be established. I've got hyacinth bean uh, growing here, purple hyacinth bean, and then um, right there is a little native um, passion passion vine. It'll only get like 12 feet tall, and it's pale yellow, and I thought it was long gone, and I weeded this, and it was underneath a gigantic weed, and so maybe it will it will grow here let's hope and then i think this um texas kidney wood is looking really pretty it's all kind of got its new pale green growth on it all floaty and my caster caster bean i'm excited <laughs> it's just a crazy plant so i thought i'd give one a try and then the parsley uh hawthorn um, it seemed to have transplanted well. And then I got a whole lot more of the um, purple hyacinth bean vine planted down there because I'm going to try to cover the rooster. The less I have to look at the rooster, the happier I am. Well, I say it loud so he can hear me say it. I just I have too many seedlings. And so I have stuck some things in here like this is extra fennel back here and uh, I put a bunch of um, 
basil back here and um, more of the bean vine. And then that's just a volunteer tomato for, I used to put homemade compost back here and that's a volunteer tomato. But the reason I really brought you back here is to show you the buds on my arrowwood viburnum, which is the native uh, Texas viburnum, one of the many. And um, I don't think the flowers are going to be very much to write home about, but this is where the little flat, the little um, berries are going to come in from for the birds in the fall. So I'm I'm excited about that. I was really excited when I saw that little um, uh, flower budding out. Well, I have taken a very long time to get around the yard. I'm going to end on this incredible begonia. Um, I. I may have mentioned before when it was going to freeze in December, I literally ripped it all out, pulled it out with my hands, broke the top off. I didn't even clip it. I just broke the tops off, threw the tops away, kept the root ball and maybe that much plant, stuck it in a bag, put it on the kitchen in the kitchen on the kitchen floor for the during the freeze. A couple days later, came back, stuck it all back in here, and this is what I've gotten. It. it I was so impressed. I forget how resilient begonias are. And I didn't even save all of them. I probably left half of them in there because I thought, well, these are gonna die. And they really didn't. And they were just, you know, literally in a garbage bag on my kitchen floor for a couple of days. And um, so I encourage you to uh, remember that you can be pretty tough on a begonia and they will, they'll come back for you. Well, I hope you guys have a terrific week and uh, I sure do appreciate you taking a moment to look at my garden and I want to say thanks to everybody who leaves me such sweet kind uh, comments. It just makes my day. Bye bye y'all.